Thanks, Matthias. It's, a, it's an honor to be invited here and to meet so many people. I think I'm the most isolated person on Matthew's, um, on Matthew's map, so, um, so thank you for that and thank you for Racket. So, there's also Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii is only halfway to Australia. Very nice, though. Um, so in my talk today, um, I hope to inspire you. Um, uh, yes, I have had a colourful career. I left academia and thought, what skills do I have? And started programming professionally. Um, been back and forth a bit done a fair bit of um, operations research. I think I missed the big data party by about, I was about 15 years too early for that. Um, and nowadays what I do is um, agile coaching and I get remunerative contracts for that and that allows me to also spend time doing more entrepreneurial things. But this all grows out of my teenage experience of writing programs and um, wanting to express myself. and. I'm going to try and roll it all together today and hopefully inspire some of you. Hands up if you do some hobby programming. No, just for fun. <laughs> I'm going to like this audience. Hands up if you work for a startup. Leave your hand up if you're one of the founders of the startup. Awesome. Okay, so I'm, this is number two for me, and that'll come into the story. Um, and I will wax philosophical, but maybe not as much as Michael, so I'm feeling so. Um, I was trying to think what hooks all these things together, including liking to work in lispy languages. And um, so in quasi-Maslowian terms, here is, my, here is my theory and it is mine, that once the basic needs are covered, most people want to do things they love and believe in. But and they want their computers to work. <laughs> What's going on here? Should come back, yeah. Um, but it's also been my observation that before you get to do, in the pursuit of the things that you love and believe in, often there are tedious and time-consuming hoops to jump through. Okay. So my approach differs somewhat to the underpants-obsessed gnomes. Okay, so here's my meta plan. You need to find something that people love and believe in or are obligated to do. Find the bad bits and crush them. That's the opportunity. Now, what I would like you to think about is that, like the gnomes say success means profit, but pro success to me can mean many things. It might mean the the dream of the startup. It might mean of the profitable startup. It might mean fame. It could be being invited to give a talk on the other side of the world. It could mean making discoveries, expressing yourself artistically, or just making a difference. So here's the plan for the talk today. And hands up if you know what a patchwork quilt is. Okay. This is not a typical patchwork quilt. They, the Amish didn't traditionally make them like this. <laughs> so rather than go into boring detail, I'm going to show you one of the videos my wife made to explain what we do. Now, I'm not quite sure how the sound's going to go, so let's just see. Okay. All right, this is good. Oh, okay. Looking to see something which had a play symbol. Uh, human. Ah, that. There it is. Thank you. It's gone. Hi, my name is Andy and I live with my family in Melbourne, Australia. I love making quilts. Recently, I have become fascinated by pixelated images in quilts. 
to. But I don't want to spend hours at the computer trying to work out pixelation, colours and fabric yardages. U-Patch is my solution. Upload your image and U-Patch does the hard work for you. Whether you are a beginner or expert quilter, whether you prefer a photorealistic or pop art style, you can turn any image into an easy to follow pattern with all the information you need to create a unique pixelated quilt. Here are some pixel quilts that I've made using U-Patch. So come and join me and have a play. What will you patch? Okay, get it? That's that. That's what it is. Um, so I'm not here to get to sell patterns, but um, to <laughs> to dive into the the technical backstory. Um, and I hope that you will see analogies. And um, I also want to meet as many of you as possible and have a chat about what you're doing as well. Um, so how did this come about? I was between paid employment opportunities. Um, I was playing around with Racket. Um, I've been a couple of years since I did the last startup and I saw my wife trying to turn this picture of Groucho using applications not suited into a design. And I said, how long is that going to take? And she said, oh, maybe about 10 hours. And I stressed, that's not an enjoyable experience and it's an error-prone experience. And I said, ooh, that doesn't look like a job for a human. Tell you what, explain to me slowly and carefully the process and I shall write your program. So, it took me a little bit more than 10 hours. Not much, but it was 10 hours of fun, whereas it would have been 10 hours of tedium for her. And at the end, I was able to click a button, and this is what it did. So for the, the hack, start with an image, reduce the spatial resolution, that's easy. Pick out the colors, there's only five colors in there, that's easy. Recolor them to match the color scheme of our kitchen, not too hard. The fun bit is writing the algorithm to aggregate the matching squares into bigger pieces, constrained also by the actual physical act of making it. So there are, as a computer scientist or mathematician, you might see additional opportunities for, um, for aggregation, but there's a very physical recursive process to build it back up, and so that influences it as well. Okay. Now, what was useful was the, for me was the Dr. Rackett graphical REPL, and I found this thing called the image library, which is very nice. Who's responsible for the image library? Thank you, Robbie. Now, I assume you didn't have this application in mind when you designed it. <laughs> and so, to me, a, a hallmark of good design is you set out to do something, I'm guessing, making graphic program accessible for students. Yeah. When you do a really good design, you'll find that you can go to a nearby domain and you're already halfway that we're there because the abstractions are good abstractions and that's what I found. Normally um, in graphics programming of course the, the meta main metaphor is painting pixels on a canvas. Um, but in patchwork quilting when you put the quilt together you take two pieces of fabric and you sew them along a seam and they come together and things like the beside and above placed me much closer conceptually to the domain I was working in. So I was able to do something quite nice in a weekend. Press the button, out comes the result. This is how much fabric to buy. Now, when you design a quilt ha by hand, you might order not enough or too much. So either a waste of money or you've got to go back to the shop and that can be a long way away when you're in Australia and the shop is in America. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, we don't really have overnight delivery. And um, uh, of course, able to print out what, what to cut, how many squares and, um, and rectangles. This is, the, this is the fun bit. 
um, producing essentially engineering diagrams. So we've done this computer-aided design. And here's my beautiful wife again and the result. So that's the hack. That was fun. Um, as she was happily sewing away, doing the fun bit, I asked her, would anybody else be interested in this kind of thing? Um, and she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, pixel quilts are trendy, but you know, they're, not many people are doing them because of the tedium and the difficulty and things like that. Sheldon had about 7,500 pieces. Um, and I had been thinking about doing another startup. I was sort of in recovery from a failed one. Um, and I, do the words lean startup mean anything to people here? Yeah, yeah. So that was what I'd read about toward the end of the previous one where we'd done it the bad old way. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to um, have another go and this time it would be, be mine. Or I would be one of the, the co-founders. Okay, so Steve Blank's definition is a startup is an organization formed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model as distinct from an established business which executes. Now, my wife said, is there enough racket in this talk? And yesterday it occurred to me I could put some in. So hash, <laughs> <laughs> hash lang lean startup, I, I didn't put it, uh, it hasn't yet been ported to type tracker. <laughs> <laughs> But, <laughs> and, and this is the only code you'll find in it, and um, I, I had some help with a code review yesterday, so thank you, um, because it doesn't compile yet. Um, but, but here's the idea, and the people who know about startups perhaps can, can help me out with this. So search, we know about search in computing. Okay, so the, there's, a, there's more to it. If, if you're considering this kind of thing, please go and read the literature and what have you. But the idea is that we're trying to search for something called product market fit. So you come up with a product, you, you ha start off with a minimal viable product because this is, all this stuff is just scientific method. You form a hypothesis, you test the hypothesis and then you learn something and then you make a new hypothesis and you iterate, so that's your search. So the idea of having a minimum viable product is to start with something small because that's going to be cheaper and faster to build and you also choose an initial market. Maybe they're going to match, maybe not. The fantasy is that they'll match. Probably you're going to have to go through a second, third, fourth iteration. You need some resources, in my case, time off work, and you start with high morale and high hopes. So, help me out here. So, if you achieve product market fit, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah, okay, we've got a scalable business we can go and do something, or, or if it's a lifestyle business, we just sit back and passive revenue rolls in. What do you do if you're low on resources? By the way, there's no uniquely correct answer here. This isn't a completely solved problem. Well, yeah. Either use fewer resources or get more. Yes, or... Um, use racket. Pardon? <laughs> use racket. Use racket, yes. Yes, <laughs> by using racket, or at my previous one, you might downsize rather radically um, in the as part of the death spiral. Um, if the if the product and market, you, you may not know whether there's the problem is with the product or with the market. What do you do? Change one of them. Change one of them. You pivot. Is the the, the lingo, but yeah, you, you change that, that's going to take you into your next iteration. What if your morale is low? Use racket, use racket. <laughs> so, we, we, we're pretty with our choices, we're pretty much invincible because we started using racket and um, basically got infinite resources because we don't spend money except for coming to conferences. Um, <laughs> and otherwise, what do you do? You iterate, you, you make little tweaks based on what informational feedback feedback you have. So that's that's kind of the idea. There's more there's more to it than that. But um, but but you have transferable a transferable understanding. Oh yeah now this one so thank you Dan Friedman for the question question mark question mark technique. I should point out the cond is not this is what also I learned it and I implement in this it's not a top to bottom thing, right? It's more like you, you sort of look at these issues and you may act um, you, you, might, you might, if you're really low on morale, but other things are going well, you, you've got to act on that rather than 
leave it because the thing's above. So this isn't a strict ordering, it's more a, maybe it's a random, or actually it means using your brain kind of thing. Um, okay, so in our case, the initial market, we could have done different things, but we took my wife as being representative. So we're selling to patchwork quilters. We wanted a minimal product, something we could iterate on and which we could build quite quickly and test out. So here's the pitch for the product. You upload an image, or you take one from the internet, and please don't violate copyright, but doesn't, no one's, we worried a lot about this, but it, we're not successful enough that it's a problem yet. You can, pixelate, <laughs> you can pixelate and edit for free. I've heard that you don't want to mess with Mickey Mouse, but um, to your heart's content. And when you've got an image that you're happy with, then you can pay us $9.50 US dollars if there isn't a sale on, and we will send you a customized PDF. Now that, I'll just mention that price was determined by mainly extrinsic factors. Um, you buy ge geometric design a PDF for a similar amount, and so we, we settled on that. Um, you need a team unless you can do everything yourself, so maybe Matthew Flat could do a startup by himself, but mere humans. <laughs> well, we had two already, but I don't know so much about web stuff, and I'd worked with John Barham, a Canadian. It, apparently his ancestors did quilt with, he would never have guessed he'd end up doing this. And he'd done some similar, um, you, you could see, he, he'd just done something where you could upload your your HDR images and to the cloud, and it would make combine them beautifully and you pay a couple of dollars and then send it back. And if I stood back and squinted, I could say that's similar to the business model we're considering. And so we brought John on board so I didn't have to learn everything technical. So that was great. So um, our target market mainly, like there's about a million, we think, women, a few hundred men maybe, doing <laughs> generally older age group. Like my, my wife is, is that they're probably, there are these young and funky ones and we're middle-aged. <laughs> um, so we had to make it easy to learn and use. And there was this trade-off, you can make it really photorealistic, but we wanted to bring it to the masses and to make, uh, convey how hard or easy it is to make a particular design. So we want to give them the control. Um, and so we applied a user-centered design approach. <laughs> Okay, product development, I'll just mention a couple of things. Groucho had five colors. If you upload an arbitrary image, it's gonna have an arbitrary number of colors. Each color, that's a different kind of fabric, so you wanna take it down to a handful. Um, so interestingly, I started using clustering algorithms and mathematical things, and then I asked my wife, is there a particular palette I should be targeting? And she said, yes, there is this range of colors. So I reformulated it as a, um, a range of fabrics. I had to reformulate it as a, um, as a matching problem. So that's one of the, the things. When you're not doing general stuff, when you're doing particular stuff and you've got good insight into the domain, you, you can often do simpler approaches. We need a PDF generation. We had a look. What was there? I said, there's this thing called Scribble. Thank you, Matthew. That worked for us. And I was prepared to be quite pragmatic. As far as I was concerned, Racket was fantastic for the R&D, but if we had to translate into other things for production, I was quite happy to do that. I'd done that kind of thing before. But Racket is still there at the back end, doing the image processing, producing the PDFs. I didn't feel comfortable forcing John to learn other stuff, especially when he used these other technologies successfully, which was half the reason I brought him in to our group. So there was the question of integration with other technology, which proved good. So, we started, and this was when I made the announcement which Matthias described on the list, with a teaser site. So we didn't have all that editing. But um, we did have a logo, again made in Rapid. And so we put up a very simple site where a user could come, register their name and email, answer a short questionnaire with questions about why you're interested in pixel quilting, what will you do, given this facility, illustrating the process, and we would send them the free design for Marilyn over there. And via social media, my wife posted, had a bit of reputation um, in quilting circles um, as a blogger. She put this up, hey, come and register for our new startup, get a free pattern, and we got a few hundred 
sign-ups pretty much like that, which encouraged us. And interestingly, some people didn't download Marilyn. They didn't like the design. And we inquired with one or two of them who we knew, and they said, oh, no, no, I don't like the design, but I want to know when your product's available. So I would have liked to have done a small iteration where we say, send us your pictures or the things you'd like to turn into a quilt and we'll do it, because then I didn't have to write the front end to do all the editing and we kind of had everything on the, the PC. And I was outvoted. So at the start of the a couple of months of work and at the start of this year we launched. So the way the whole tech stack works is the front end is just HTML, JavaScript, drag, query, bootstrap, so it's kind of works on your phone or your tablet. The middle layer is Python, Nginx, Django, Mezzanine CMS, another Australian invention from Sydney, however, so I can't be too enthused. Um, <laughs> there's like only two cities you need to care about in Australia. It's a lot smaller. Um, and um, the back end, as I said, is the deep back end that does all the good stuff is Racket. And the way it all talks together, I'm told how, it, what is it, I don't really know about this stuff. It is a quasi, I don't know what the quasi means, it's a quasi microservices architecture. And what that means to me is we've just, we've got well-defined interfaces using JSON. And that's worked quite nicely for us. So I'll quickly step you through how it works if you haven't had a play. So step one, upload your image and you can crop it. You can choose the aspect ratio of the quilt. We've kept it nice and simple. It can be square, it can be portrait or it can be landscape. This is the main step and this is where you get to play because if, once we've taken away the tedium you can get immediate response. You can see what happens when you change the level of detail um, from lower to higher resolution or the number of colours, 2 to 15 are the limits we've imposed. Quilt size just changes how much fabric you've got to order. And you can sort of compare it with the, the original cropped image to see it if it's a representation. You might want to be photorealistic, you might want to do stylized, like two colours or a pop arty. One, my wife likes the pop art style. And this is my attempt to convey the complexity. How long will it take to make the quilt? Because if it's going to, it's easy to wind up all the colours, and some of our users do this, um, and wind up the level of detail to get a really photorealistic thing, and then it, they may not be able to make it. And it will take a long time, and then they won't be a fast um, they won't be coming back for another one in a long time, which is bad for us. And they won't be posting it on Instagram and Pinterest and saying, look what I made with you, Patch. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't guarantee that they'll do the right thing. But I'll come back to that. So we put them in control. The computer's generating these designs. And then we were able to make some very specific editors. This is the one where you can go all pop arty and change the colours. And the colours are, you know, not HTML colours, but they're actually fabric colours from a specific range. And we've included some pixel editing. So one thing that can happen is that the highlights, like lips and eyes, go, in this case I added a colour, a bit of orange, and put back in the bubble loop that my daughter's using to blow her bubbles with. Give the quilt a name, pay us some money, and we'll send you a PDF. You get emailed a PDF. So we're actually in the ebook publishing business, and our median number of readers per book is one. <laughs> We've got some other patterns for sale, and they may sell. Um, so how do I get 19 pages? Well, I can you know generate a lot of pages computationally. Um, there's some pretty pictures, there's the shopping list, there's what to cut, there's a tutorial of how to assemble it, what you'd expect to get in the pattern, and then there's the quilting by numbers. And you get to do these fun little things like, I need lines, and they've got a contrast, and I don't know what colours people have chosen, so that's a little algorithm to invent, or I wasn't convinced that my heuristic was correct for how much fabric to buy, so I visualised it and I said to my wife, would that be a good feature? No one does this because they don't haven't done this kind of thing with computers, and she said no, and that's ridiculous, and then I showed her, and she said that would be really cool, and people love it. <laughs> so it's this, it's this intersection, like I learned stuff from her about what the problem really was, but with my knowledge of maths and computing, you know, you've got this, this is what I think they meant about um, uh, cross-disciplinary research. 
Okay, so um, startup people, you all recognize this picture? Yeah, okay, so these are, this is where your, custo where your customers or users, depending on what is where they live. Um, the innovators are the people who hear about what you're doing and just glom onto it almost immediately. They're look actively looking. Early adopters are the you know, open-minded people who will come on quite easily. We got these guys immediately, got some of those. But most people in the early majority, they need social proof. And there's the thesis of Jeffrey Moore is that in tech adoption of something new, and this is new, um, there's this big scary chasm to cross. The late majority will go once the early majority comes along and the laggards, don't worry about that. Okay. So social proof. Um, people have started making stuff. So this is, this is enormously gratifying. Um, as predicted by our questionnaire, children, pets. Interestingly, I thought cats would be more popular than dogs, it being the internet. But our questionnaire revealed otherwise, and there's research to be done on this. Pop culture, geek culture, um, and you, you've heard how much that Microsoft has bought Minecraft. Yes, for two and a half billion dollars. Um, we will not be that successful. I, I will eat all my clothing if <laughs> something like that ever happens. <laughs> so what else? Um, yeah, we don't pay for AdWords. We, we do stuff with social media, so we want people to write about us, and they do to a certain extent. And we've got into magazines. Um, uh, the, the story is, is interesting, it's something new in the quilting world. We'll sometimes do a pattern giveaway. Um, so these are the kind, simpler patterns that people can make rather than over ambitious ones. Um, and excitingly, this hasn't quite come out yet, but um, so we chose a particular range of fabrics that they love us because we're basically advertising their fabrics. Um, there's block fabrics. And they came to us a few weeks ago and said, um, we've got a new range of fabrics inspired by Vincent, the organizer of this conference, no, Vincent van Gogh, <laughs> and could you do a design which features the new range? So normally we use those fabrics, but I did a bit of post-processing, and um, they'll, they'll launch the, they'll be launching it like about now. Um, I think it was supposed to be yesterday, but we haven't seen it come out. And they'll direct people to our site where they can sign up and um, get a free fabric, um, a free, um, design of, um, of Vincent featuring um, these non-block fabrics. So that's kind of cool. Um, so um, yeah, one of the things that you're supposed to do is concentrate in the Lean Startup vernacular is concentrate on really making your early adopters happy because they, they are going to be the, the missionaries, if you like, who give you the good word of mouth. So we give really personalized support, like um, I'll just explain. People do just turn all the dials up and download a pattern. And so we see what everyone buys and if they look over complicated or they've struggled with it, my wife will quickly redo it and send them a nice letter explaining how she did it. Here's a free pattern, so you've got the choice. And here, here are the tutorials that you should have, which you could please go and do <laughs> so that you can do this for yourself next time. And often we get nice responses and sometimes good insights into where they, where they struggle. And we send out newsletters showing what other people have done. Um, uh, we'll, we'll do our first craft show in Australia next month and I'll be back in the US with my wife in Austin, Texas at the biggest quilt show in the world. So I'm hoping to have some other experimental things to, to try out there while we um, raise consciousness. Um, but what's nice is from here we get to iterate, especially since I'm now not working full time for a little while. And we have a name in the tech craft area if we want to try other ideas. So we can pivot not out of panic, but out of the desire to, to do better when, I, when we come up with other ideas. Okay, so where are we going? So what do I love and believe in? Well, obviously problem solving, creative programming and making a difference in people's lives. And I deserve good tools as well, or even great tools. 
which brings me to racket. So for me, low barrier to entry was important. So I discovered racket when I was reading SICP and I was looking for a scheme, it was Doctor Scheme then, um, to learn it and racket just opened up and worked. Um, sorry about this, I tried to get closure to work and <laughs> it was harder, but, <laughs> you know, and I didn't have Emacs at that time and so yeah, so so the thing that I the thing of just being able to download and stuff works is, is is fantastic. But what drew me to the Lisps was this desire to be able to ultimately express myself in the cleanest possible abstractions, and for that you need um, that uh, macro or whatever you're allowed to call it capabilities. Um, I'm not there yet, but I you know use a bit, and and it's it's nice that I can go in whatever directions that I choose. Now, in terms of UPatch, what were the winners? So the Dr. Racket graphical REPL thing, um, it's not just batteries included, it's like jetpacks included. I've mentioned image, Scribble has been fantastic. Um, the community is so nice and intelligent and responsive. Um, and R&D to production proved possible. It was a bit slow at first, the execution of the core loop, so I did a bit of timing, learned about unsafe operations, um, Startup time was a bit slow, it wasn't like the JVM, but I wanted it faster, so I built the Grouchify server. So I've got a little server at the back end where, so it just runs there and John's code calls it and it all works nice and fast, so that's been great. Um, okay. So coming back to the original theme, um, if you like doing creative programming, and almost everyone raised their hands, I think that it now is a great time, I mean, I probably correspond to that autodidact category um, when I start out, but now if you do something, you can put it up on, on GitHub and I think the first one which got any response that I did was my 2048 implementation, so sorry for the time wasting, but I got a couple of pull requests um, from Greg and from, um, from John Clement, so that was, a, that was a buzz. I didn't really get it until that happened. Um, in academia, um, there are speak to the core racket team um, about, about that, I'm not the person to ask. Regular job for me, I've had mixed experiences, that's kind of why I do the agile stuff so people don't tell me to do stupid things in stupid languages. Um, but I'm here to talk about startups, um, so why do it? It's like this fantastic adventure, um, you get to make the choices, there's the lure of fame and fortune, it hasn't happened yet. Um, why not? It is stressful. The flip side is that you are responsible for those choices um, and you need to have the time and resources to, to do it. Um, so we, you, I'm not saying that you shouldn't take funding. I've worked at a funded startup before, um, but I do like owning intellectual property. I'm not sure why. Um, but if you do it yourself, it's kind of do what, DIY. You learn about things, you find that, well, compared to re relativity or racket research, Doing things like registering a company, it might say it's different, it's out of your comfort zone, but hey, it's not that hard. You, you can do it. Um, and you can transfer those skills, the scientific method stuff, to, um, to business development, for which I rec highly recommend the lean and agile stuff. And you can, as Paul Graham said, you can choose whatever you like, probably it's some sort of lisp, maybe even racket. So that's my story. I hope it resonated with you. Um, Thank you again for inviting me and for Racket. Um, and time permitting, I would love to answer any questions or just talk with you afterwards. Yes, Jeff. Let's go. I don't know how to mic. Hold on. I'm supposed to find you back. Okay. okay. So we're talk. Just speak loud. Uh, I want to get a quilt that looks like this, <laughs> and I want to get a quilt that has the pictures of the people who contributed to Rocket. Okay. So now, interestingly, one person who responded um, suggested a John McCarthy quilt, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So one possible pivot. So the, the way to do it. It also, lots of faces don't necessarily work that well, but I would encourage you to go and have a play, right? Do you know, um, if you know someone who's into quilting, that would be good because we've, that's what we're targeting. We have this thing called the China option where we actually sell the quilt, but we're not up to that kind of I, I know thing. I 
<laughs> so yeah, it's still, you know, it's doable. You, um, yeah. So if I have maybe one, one more real quick question, and then we'll uh, go out to lunch. Hi, I think, thank you. I actually was, was curious about the China option. I know that like computers can run things like inverter machines. I didn't know if there was, is there something similar for, for quilting where you could do something insanely complex and not end up in Okay, uh, thank you, Matthew. I'll, I'll digress onto this. So last time I was, I hadn't been in America for 20 years. I was here with the family because we had family in, in Los Angeles, a little place called Beverly Hills, and there was a family wedding. And um, what I didn't know was, like, we came just in time for the wedding and then we had, like, trip of a lifetime holiday. But um, the groom, not part, now part of our family, um, was from the East Coast. And it turns out he was a robotics engineer working at um, JPL. And if I'd come a day earlier, I could have had a, had a tour with his, with his folks. So he asked the question, of course, you're going to make these quilts with robots. And I said, L let me do the literature review. And um, it turns out it's quite hard because of the stretchiness of the fabric. But uh, it's, uh, it's an area. Uh, th th there's probably something there. You probably don't have to totally automate it because there's, there's people trying to, you know, put the sweatshops out of business, which would be quite a, quite a change. But um, we haven't gone there yet. <laughs> Racket robot. Racket robot. So you know, if you want, if you, if you want to challenge. And that's the market. Yeah, that's the market that we've. That, that we've we've um, that we've gone for initially, but you know, and there's other possibilities. We could try and become an enabler, so that um, you know, so that people, because like I reckon, if you could deliver this kind of stuff at a reasonable price, then Comic Con people would want all their geeky <laughs> geeky quilts. Um, if but it's the it's the it's the econo it's the the economics of it. So yes, Matthias. Do you think that racket has the extraction power? To create a store where you can buy a craft sack. And you have done one, you're going to make another sandwich. You said you're going to do another craft, and you're going to attract the person. She's pretty obsessed with so quilts. You can extract all this, and then just offer a way for people to buy a major old craft website. Um, I think the answer is is maybe like a lot of people said. What about um, you know? Or what about knitting? What about ne What about needlework? Um, mosaics, etc. Like even like I've I've got squares and rectangles in there. Quilts have triangles and and thing and things like that. So there are possibilities. I mean, I think you could model all that stuff. How different the the domains are. I'm not sure. I think it's a question for, for lunch or a uh, beer. Speaking of lunch, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so let's uh, another hand of applause.